When you hear the phrase criminal justice, you probably think of something to do with police, court cases, and fair punishment. Or maybe you think of something to do with your favorite TV show that revolves around crimes and the law. However, there is a lot more about the criminal justice system today that many people don't know or choose to ignore because they don't consider it to be their problem. For example, it may come as a surprise that the United States is responsible for 22% of the world's prison population, but only accounts for about 5% of the world's total population. Hi, my name is Kayla Basmanjan, and I'm here to share with you some of the current viewpoints people have on the criminal justice system here in the United States, where they're seemingly more negatives than positives. First, I want to briefly share how I was inspired to talk about the topic of criminal justice. This past summer, I attended a program at the University of Notre Dame and attended a literature course taught by one of the professors there. I learned, or my, my professor, Professor Kelly, has a deep interest and passion for the criminal justice system. He visits the local prison regularly and strives to teach his students about the injustices of a system that most people assume is perfect. His lessons were the first time I'd ever heard about there being problems in the criminal justice system. To be honest, I hadn't really given it much thought prior to his teachings. In class, we read books, excerpts, and articles, and watched movies and documentaries as well. We were even fortunate enough to meet someone who had experienced time in jail himself and got to hear his story. When I got home from camp, I wanted to talk to people about the issue and hear what they had to say about these injustices. But I found that most people did not have enough knowledge to speak about the topic. So my goal here tonight is to share information with you so that you can have conversations and maybe even work towards changes you want to see. Before I talk specifically about the pros and cons of the criminal justice system, I want to give a brief summary of what it is for those of you that might not know or only have a brief of uh, only have a vague idea of it. There are three the overall goal is to enforce law, um, enforce criminal law, prevent crime, punish criminals, and seek justice. There are three main parts used to accomplish this. First, the police are considered the first line of defense as they work to prevent crime. Unfortunately, crimes still happen, and in some cases, police detectives are required or are responsible for investigating the crime and gathering evidence, which can then be used in courts. Next are the prosecution and the courts, who have cases referred to them from the police. Their positions are influential because they decide whether or not to charge a suspect with a crime. If a suspect is found guilty, they continue on to the correctional system. They continue on to the correctional system. The correctional system carries out those sentences given by the courts to the convicted offenders. Some of these sentences could include probation, a period of community supervision, parole, a period of community supervision, following time in jail, and lastly, imprisonment. Today, there is an increasingly growing number of individuals in prison, and thus the phrase mass incarceration was created by criminologists. As previously stated, the criminal justice system was established with the goal of enforcing law, preventing crime, punishing criminals, and seeking justice. Many people support the criminal justice system as it stands today because they feel it successfully accomplishes these goals. First, the system removes people who have committed crimes from the general population. By removing criminals, other citizens who follow the law are arguably safer and protected, and simple peace is established in the community. The scare tactic is another reason people may support the criminal justice system. Children who have a basic understanding of the law and the consequences of not following it may see prison as a scary and bad place where they don't want to be. Thus, they might make certain choices in life to avoid going to jail because the thought of it deters them from committing crimes. Prison also sometimes deters repeat offenders who upon release may follow the law extra closely to avoid going to jail. They may have learned, their, learned from their mistakes and act accordingly in order to stay in the community and out of prison. Another reason people support the criminal justice system is the fair punishment they feel criminals receive. The severity of the punishment aligns with the severity of the crime, which seems fair and may even act as another type of deterrent from certain crime. Unfor while all these pros may seem reasonable and logical, unfortunately they aren't enough. Unfortunately, the truth remains that the number of individuals going to jail has increased drastically in recent years and has had more negative impacts than should be expected. <coughs> Many people are opposed to the criminal justice system for reasons that directly contradict the intended positives. Jails and prisons have high rates of recidivism, which the National Institute of Justice defines as, quote, a person's relapse into criminal behavior often after they have undergone intervention for a previous crime. The Bureau of Justice performed a study in 30 states on approximately 404,000 individuals after their release from prison. After three years, two-thirds of released prisoners were rearrested. After five years, three-quarters of released prisoners were rearrested. These statistics suggest that prisons and jails are not effective in preventing criminals from committing crimes upon release. In other words, they don't have the right rehabilitation programs to help criminals successfully integrate back into society. When a prisoner is finally released, they have lost their previous livelihoods, face discrimination, and struggle to find a short footing again after time in jail. Additionally, as states struggle with 
um, spending budgets, and distributing money where government officials feel is most important. Rehabilitation programs are one of the first things that gets cut from criminal justice spending. In terms of sentencing, it is assumed that the punishment is fair in reference to the crime. In many cases, this may be true. There are certainly individuals who are rightly imprisoned for crimes they commit. However, there are also many non-violent offenders imprisoned for extensive periods of time. In her 2010 book, um, The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration, The Age of Colorblindness, Michelle Alexander states, quote, violent crime is not responsible for the prison boom in the United States. The uncomfortable reality is that drug offenses, nonviolent crimes, are the single most important cause of the prison boom in the United States. The population of imprisoned individuals has skyrocketed over the last 30 years, increasing from only 300,000 to 2 million as police started targeting areas with higher likelihood of drugs, primarily impoverished areas inhabited by those of minorities. Therefore, another problem in the system is the ratio of minorities in prison compared to the general population. Minorities are overrepresented. This has had massive consequences on communities and families as essential participating members are absent and instead locked behind bars. Another topic of concern is the fact that teenagers and young individuals are being tried as adults for adult crimes even though they aren't even considered legal adults. I wish I had more time to dedicate to this issue because it is a massive debate that does not get the attention it should. This phenomenon of mass incarceration has also led to severe overcrowding in jails and prisons. According to Penal Reform International, quote, Overcrowding undermines the ability of prison systems to meet basic human needs, such as healthcare, food, and accommodation. It also compromises the um, provision and effectiveness of rehabilitation programs, educational vocational training, and recreational activities. Additionally, other health concerns involved with overcrowding include increased rates of violence, self-harm, and suicide. Lastly, there's a significant number, a significant population of imprisoned individuals who would benefit from mental health support but cannot receive the treatment and care they need due to lack of funding and overcrowding. Among all these negatives, there has been a more recent movement to reform that causes change in the realm of criminal justice, uh, particularly in terms of alternatives to imprisonment. Some of these alternatives include courts designed specifically to work on drug cases and mental health care, more probation and community correction options, uh, home home confinement and monitoring, fines and institutions, and restorative justice programs aimed at healing those affected by crime. Alternatives to imprisonment are supported for several reasons. First, they give courts more sentencing options so they can more appropriately match the punishment to the crime, in addition to helping protect the public and provide effective rehabilitation. Next, they save taxpayers money. It costs over $28,000 to keep one person in federal prison for one year. So by having alternatives to imprisonment, it is cheaper, um, helps prevent overcrowding and can save taxpayers millions of dollars. Some of these dollars could then also be used to, um, to create new and improved rehabilitation programs for the prisoners. Imprisonment also separates the offender from his or her family, possibly for extended periods of time. <coughs> Therefore, alternatives to imprisonment could help strengthen communities and families by allowing them to be more connected. As I explained earlier, some individuals who have been in prison return to jail not long after their release. However, it is possible that alternatives to imprisonment help encourage positive behaviors in, um, instead of jail time or reduce recidivism rates. Overall, alternatives to imprisonment are established with the goal of providing effective rehabilitation while also diminishing costs. Okay, so I just said a lot of information about the criminal justice system, the pros and cons, and ideas for reform and whatnot. I'm not trying to force any opinions on you. I repeat, I'm not trying to force anything at all on you. But I do hope that now you have had something to think and talk about. My goal here tonight is to share information and get conversations flowing about get conversations flowing about a topic I personally find very stimulating. So I hope I met my goal and you got something out of my talk, and thank you all very much for listening.